Hello, welcome to the Man Explained podcast. I'm Connor. Today I'll be talking about the deck I built for Marhalt Els Dragon. So Marhalt Els Dragon is a six mana four six with Rampage one. And the way Rampage works is for each creature blocking beyond the first, you'll get a stat bump. So for Rampage one, if you get blocked by one creature, nothing happens. You get blocked by two creatures, you get plus one plus one. You get blocked by two creatures or three creatures, you get plus two plus two, and so on and so forth. And so. Rampage 1 isn't really that great because you don't even break even on 1-1s. One you really need to get Rampage 2 or Rampage 3 going in order to really see that stat bump matter and to be effective. And so because of that, I decided to just go a Rampage Tribal deck. I tried to find as many creatures with Rampage I could get in the gruel red-green colors and throw them all together in a deck and see what I could do with that. And I'm really happy with the result and I really hope you enjoy the deck. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps grow the channel and I love talking with all you guys down in the comments after these videos go live. So for the deck breakdown, I have 15 theme cards, 10 sub theme cards, 8 synergy cards, 0 protection cards, and 3 death touch cards. So death touch works great with Rampage because you can, as more creatures come in and block, even with Rampage 1, you can just assign that 1 damage to all those creatures, so it makes death touch work really well here. And then I the synergy cards, just kind of stuff that goes along with uh death of uh, the rampage like effects and then the sub theme are cards like lure that force your opponent's creatures to block your creatures that way you can get the rampage to go off and really start being able to kill tons of creatures with your combat steps also for the deck breakdown i have 12 draw 12 ramp 15 removal zero board wipes and 36 lands there's a lot of removal in this deck and i managed to fit a ton of draw and ramp as well uh because of rampage if your creature survives the combat they're going to have a very high power uh, at, at during the second main phase because the Rampage is going to boost their power and toughness, which allows you to draw cards with the green big power draw spells like Rishkar's uh, Expertise or in, uh, Return of the Loudspeaker. So I was able to put effects like that in here along with some combat draw effects as well. Of course, we're in green. The ramp's going to be great. And I f a 15 removal spells is a lot, but that's because the entire sub theme is also removal because it forces your opponent's creatures to be blocks maybe force some unfortunate blocks which lets you kill them so that is also fits the whole removal part of the deck and that leaves 12 crossover cards 10 of these 12 crossover cards are just removal because they're the sub theme to synergize with rampage and then they're also removal but hey that's more than 10 that's where i'm looking for for a crossover category i'm super happy with that so for the theme I found a bunch of creatures with Rampage, but I also found some other creatures that have pseudo Rampage and some even more creatures that say when they, be when they become blocked, the creature blocking it dies, which is just Rampage with less steps in a lot of ways sometimes. Uh, so I'm going to show all those creatures now and they're really interesting. Some of them have like really high Rampage values or just really strong creatures in general. So I'm, re I'm really happy with the theme of the deck. These are the Rampage 1 creatures. The best one here is Varchild's War Riders because it has a cumulative upkeep cost of putting a 1-1 creature token under an opponent's control. So this will just give you a bunch of fodder for all of your Rampage creatures to be able to get huge power, uh, power and toughness boosts when they're attacking, which can lean into the card draw spells that I've laid out. Yeah, that card's amazing. Um, I'm also putting that in a go deck I'm building for personal use because giving your opponents a bunch of creatures that you can go and force them to go into combat with is also fantastic. So this card also has some use there. Virtual's War Rider is just a very cool card. I'm a big fan. And then Boluvian War Makers also has haste. So that makes the Rampage one a little bit better because you can start getting triggers on it the turn it attacks, or turn it enters. We're cooking now. We got some Rampage 2 creatures here. Gorilla Berserkers and Craw Giant both have Rampage 2 and Trample, which is what you want to be doing. You want to be able to block a bunch of 1-1s, one and then you can start trampling over to deal a ton of damage. But then you also have Frost Giant and Wolverine Pack here that just have Rampage 2. These are all great for what you're trying to do here, which is get a card out that will force some blocks, getting your creatures really big, and being able to deal a ton of damage that way. And the best tramp Rampage creature in the deck, or Trampage, is Tika's Dragon. Now it has Flying, so... You're going to have some issues with forcing blocks that way, but this will wipe out an entire board of flying creatures. Like, uh, like on somebody, if someone's playing a dragon deck, if their deck is covered with five fives and four fours, Tika's dragon will probably trade with or kill all of them. Say someone's playing the Locust God and they got a swarm of locusts on their side of the field, swing with Tika's dragon, murder all of them, trample for a gajillion damage. Tika's dragon is fantastic, and then. 
Rathi Berserker is actually, its name is Irathi, like A-E down in the flavor text there. It's funny because when I was looking for this card to import the image, uh, when I download all the images, it, I was looking for Rathi, but it got errata to have the A-E, which is kind of funny. So yeah, these cards, great. The Rampage 3, super useful on a five mana body. That's actually pretty good. Then we get to the pseudo Rampage creatures. These creatures have like Rampage Plus, where it's for each creature blocking it, it gets the buff. So it counts the first creature as well. So it's slightly better than Rampage, but they don't go to the higher numbers nearly as often. Like Vaishino Weaponsmith is a 2-2 with essentially just slightly better Rampage 2 for four. So you do run into some times the creatures will have be more costly and stuff. Although Elvish Berserker, one mana one one with better Rampage, that's kind of crazy. And the last group of creatures in this category uh, Sylvan Basilisk and Engulfing Slagworm. Whenever a creature blocks it, that creature gets destroyed. So you don't even have to deal combat damage or anything. Just these creatures can't be blocked, essentially, which is kind of crazy, honestly. That's so strong. Like, that, it's kind of wild. And then Brash Tauner here, it's indestructible. And whenever it takes damage, it redirects that damage to target opponent. So you can give it something like a lure effect and then attack with it everything's forced to block it and then it'll deal all of that damage at an opponent's face it is brash tarn is also one of my favorite cards of all time the flavor text on it is phenomenal because if, for people that don't know kobolds and magic are zero ones so yeah this card is one of my favorite cards of all time also pay two and a red and it fights another target creature so say you have one of your creatures that has a huge power because of it has rampage and it got to rampage off that turn you get brash tonner to fight it and then redirect that damage again at somebody's face brash tonner so good in this deck love this card the sub theme is lure effects and stuff like that cards like nemesis mask just to force block so that you can get the rampage stacks off or use the engulfing slag worm to kill all their creatures just outright or use a brash tonner card to be able to deal a ton of damage to their face the permanent version of these effects, the cards that'll stick around, they're not one-off. You got Invasion Plans, which is probably the strongest version of this in the deck. Each creature blocks whenever able, an attacking player chooses how each creature blocks. This is so nuts. Like You can attack with a couple of your creatures, and then just pile everything on the biggest Rampage creature. And yes, your opponents get to use this effect as well, but you're going to be, since you have the Rampage creatures, you're going to have this to the most effect. Nemesis Mask and Tempting Lissid both do the same thing where you get to either equip or enchant a creature and then that creature just forces all creatures to block it. And then Grand Melee is a little bit worse than Invasion Plans because all creatures block and attack each turn. So your opponent will have to attack with their creatures means they will have creatures tap down sometimes when you're trying to attack and kill their creatures. But with you again having Rampage, if they don't have creatures with haste, the turn they enter during your turn you can attack and most likely kill them so yeah invasion plans grand melee those cards are phenomenal invasion plans being one of the strongest cards in the deck these are the aura versions of the last effect so with these ones you can only put them on one creature and then if that creature dies these effects go away noble quarry will stick around um because the bestow effect when it falls off as an aura it turns back into a creature uh, the problem is that once it's on the field, it's just a 1-1 one, one with all creatures are forced to block it, which could be a good thing. You could, If you have a bunch of creatures that you just rather get the combat damages because someone's low, you could force all the blocks on Noble Quarry and then deal all the combat damage with the other creatures, so that's nice. And then Sentence Desire and Lure, some more uh, enchant or enchantment auras that force blocks. Sentence Desire is a little different, though because all creatures need to, in order to have that effect, you need to reach threshold, which means you have seven or more cards in your graveyard. The last three cards of the sub-theme category are the instant and sorcery versions of all creatures are forced to block. Uh, Blood Sense, interesting, because since it's an instant, you could technically do this on someone else's turn and force blocks on one of their creatures. So you can also use it as like a pseudo kill spell that way. You could probably, if you target one creature that's pretty big, one person will have to block all those all their creatures into that. You could kill some of their creatures, maybe kill the big thing on the other player's board. Yeah, Blood Scent has multiple uses there, which is pretty nice. And then, yeah, Roar of Challenge and Alluring Scent, just some more one-off. Everyone has to block that creature. The Synergy category, like oftentimes, is a jumbled, just catch-all category of cards. But they all synergize with Rampage quite well. 
and other effects like that and what I'm trying to do with the deck so I'm really happy with the synergy category even if it is just like a pile of miscellaneous cards these are the three trample cards now trample only matters for like the rampage three or rampage four because people are more li than likely not going to just have a board fill of one ones so when you have rampage three and rampage four going the trample really does help one of our rampage four creatures already does have trample but one of the rampage three creatures doesn't and also these cards have more than one effect so like dragon fangs it gives plus one plus one and trample and it's re it recurs itself if it's in the graveyard whenever you cast a creature with mana value of six so that's super great rancor whenever it gets put into a graveyard it goes back to your hand it gives plus two plus oh so it's also a buff one mana repeatable effect it's great also that fallout art is awesome and then garrick's uprising is everyone gets trampled but whenever it enters the battlefield or a creature enters the battlefield power four or greater you get to draw a card so garrick's uprising phenomenal card that way I, all these cards give trample which can be so, it's kind of useful here and there but their other effects are quite good some extra combat cards uh you can the reason extra combat here is good because say they have all their creatures just died but you weren't able to get one of those trample out or the trample didn't matter because they had a board of one ones or two twos and you had only a rampage one or a rampage two creature out the extra combat will then let you swing again to be able to deal all that damage with your newly buffed rampage creature and these cards are great for that aggravated assault being able to re reuse the ability over and over is so broken it is five mana but five mana for an additional combat step is honestly ridiculous that's kind of cheap and if you were going to build this deck for yourself i recommend swapping out marhalt l's dragon with general marhalt l's dragon uh the general the newer version of marhalt uh is just a better commander for a rampage style deck it gives all of your creatures pseudo rampage it's actually just better rampage it's plus three plus three until end of turn for each creature blocking it it's better rampage three so if you wanted to make a trample e version uh yeah general marhalt Owls dragon is great and it gives it to himself so he gives himself and everybody a better version of rampage which is just awesome i might actually build just uh for maybe a personal deck of mine a uh, general marhalt version of rampage i think it might be very cool maybe just fill the deck with trample creatures i don't know it might be really neat jangling automaton on the other hand will untap all of your untap all the creatures the defending player you're attacking controls which means that even if they had a bunch of creatures they attacked like maybe they had haste or something you get to untap them all and then kill them with your rampage creatures or your engulfing slagworm or whatever and then vigor just prevents the damage your creature would take and gives it one one counters so that it's it, that's it's such a crazy effect it protects your i guess this would count as protection so it could fill the protection category but it's six mana it's a creature it's easier to move i don't know but it will just pump up your board in an insane way and let you keep attacking for insane amounts of damage. So I know there's only three Death Touch cards and there's only three Trample cards, but I really felt Death Touch needed its own category more than like the Trample or some of the other Synergy cards because with the Death Touch part, it's so good with Rampage because even with Rampage 1, if you're going up against three threes, two twos, four fours, it doesn't matter. Yes, your creature will probably die, but you can still board wipe with your rampage creature if it has death touch on it. It's crazy value. So the death touch cards I decided to add: Basilisk Collar, Death Touch again, great, but also Life Link. So when you have your big rampage creature, you can gain a bunch of life. That'll be a huge swing, give you, set you up better for the late game. Basilisk Collar is great that way. Roan Frostfang and Bow of Nylea both give your attacking creatures death touch which is awesome. Roan Frostfang also draws you cards whenever your creatures deal combat damage to a player. Roan Frostfang, ridiculously strong card. Also, didn't notice till now, but it has two tongues. That's kind of weird. And then Bow and Ilea's alternate effect, you can put some, some put a plus one plus out counter on a creature, deal two damage to a flying creature, gain three life, or you could put up to four cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library in any order so you can if you're playing some shuffling effects this is a way to get some cards out of your graveyard back in your library maybe you played some removal you want a chance to draw it again later you can use bow and Ilea to get that back into your library and maybe play a fetch land or something shuffle it up and maybe you'll be able to find that stuff again later this deck has a lot of draw that's really nice i've had issues with other decks in the past like aggro decks like this where you're attacking a lot just running out of steam really quickly because you'll play your creature attack a few times people will notice they're taking a ton of damage so they'll kill it and then you're just you may play out another creature but you'll slowly run out of steam so i put a lot of draw in here to help alleviate that 
Two of the strongest draw spells in this deck, being Greater Good and Momentous Fall, are nuts. Both four mana, but they both draw you cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. Greater Good is a permanent, so you can do it more than once, but you do have to discard three cards after that. So, but if you're drawing like 10 cards, discarding three after you draw those 10 is not an issue. Like, you're not upset about that. It is fine. Momentous Fall only being a one-time effect too, that's still just a surge of cards into your hand that are going to be so useful. And at four mana, that's that's great. These are the draw spells that care about combat. Already seen a row in Frostfang. Toski does the same thing. Whenever a creature you control does combat damage to a player, draw a card. Toski does have Indestructible. So what you want, you could do if you wanted to would be throw one of the lure effects on Toski. And then when you attack, every all of those creatures will have to block uh, block Toski, which lets all of your other creatures get in for damage in case you want to draw a card. So that's a neat little combo there. Benefactors draw it like Jangly Automaton will untap all of your opponent's creatures, but then will draw you a card, uh, it'll cantrip itself, and then draw you another card for each creature an opponent controls that's blocking this turn. So that's kind of nuts. It's, yeah, no, Benefactor's Draw, it's crazy. And then Infiltration Lens, whenever a creature you control becomes, whenever the equipped creature becomes blocked, you get to draw two cards. All of these cards are just really good, efficient card draw, and their alternate effects or use cases are also insanely useful. The burst, some more burst draw effects. Return, Souls, and Rishkar also just draw you cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Uh, Rish, Return of the Wild Speaker cares about non-humans, but I don't think there's any humans in this deck. And then Rishkar's Expertise lets you cast something that costs 5 or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So it essentially could theoretically only cost 1 mana, which is wild. That's so strong. Then Harmonize, 4 mana, draw 3 cards. I'm a big fan of that card. Also again, Fallout Art, phenomenal. Last two draw effects, Colossal Majesty. Your commander's power 4 or greater, so often this is going to just feel like a Phyrexian Arena. But you don't lose the life, so that's great. And then Garuk's, up, Gar Garuk. Garuk's Uprising, again, draws you a card when it enters if you have a power of four greater creature, which your commander is. And then whenever a creature with power four greater enters, you draw a card, which your commander is. So Garruk's Uprising is great in that way. Also gives you Trample. These cards are fantastic. Yay, green ramp. We get to do the good ramp, not bad artifact ramp, really solid land ramp. And because we're in green red, we get access to my favorite ramp spell. My favorite ramp spell being Goblin or Narcomancer. Goblin and Archimancer is ridiculous. I've definitely talked about it on the, sh the channel before, but this card is insane. I've had this card make more mana for me over the course of a game than a Sol Ring. It's it's honestly wild. Playing a Rampant Growth for one mana, playing a Farseek for one mana. Your commander then costs one cheaper. And then also you have other stuff in the deck that this just manages to knock down in mana cost. It's so busted. I love this card so much. And then because we're in green, these are all the two mana ramp spells I like to run. And then these are all the three and four mana ramp spells I like to run. Uh, I've talked about them before in all of my videos with green, essentially. Um, they're great. They're all great ramp spells. The best ones here are the cards like Skyshrow Claim, Ranger's Path, Nature's Lore, and Three Visits. Because they can find you forests. And then Farsi can also find you a mountain so you can get your typed lands, like your mountain forests, in order to color fix better. So the sub theme is also removal. I'm not going to go over all those cards again here because there'd be really no point, but I do have five non sub theme removal cards here just because you need some more spot removal effects to deal with the non creatures on the board. Hull Breach and Atraxus Fall, my two new favorite removal spells in green and then red green. Hull Breach can destroy an artifact and an enchantment. That is insane. Two mana, get rid of two things. It's a two for one for two mana. That is ridiculous. That rate, that value is... I, I don't know. That card's insane. It's so strong. Turn to Nature, also quite good. The exiling target card from a graveyard has come into effect for me before. Uh, someone was going to reanimate Natali or something like that, and I went, nope, exile it in response. So good. God, I love Return to Nature. And then a Braid, being able to lightning bolt a creature or destroying an artifact. Just the utility there is fantastic. And then Beast Within, being able to hit any permanent and swapping it out for a 3-3. You love to see it. So we're in red green, which means we're going to use some red green lands that care about combat, can give you some benefits during combat, pump effects, stuff like that. And also because we're in red green, we're running a bunch of the type lands, forest, mountains, so that you can fetch them with your sky shroud claims and stuff like that to color fix. Kessick Wolf Run, Skarg the Rage Pits. Two great combat trick lands that can give a creature trample and a power bump. 
Uh, Kessig Wolf runs plus X plus O, so you can really dump a bunch of mana into that. While Skarg the Rage Pits is just a red and a green. And then it gives plus one, plus one, and trample. The trample here, again, some more trample effects. You love to see it. And for Kessig Wolf Run, if you want to just pay the red and the green the tap to give the creature trample, you don't care about the power bump, you can also do that. X can be zero, which is fantastic. Uh, commercial District, kind of representing all the mountain forests in the deck. It's the best one because when it enters the battlefield, it surveils, which is essentially almost as good as drawing a card. It's, oh my god, it's so good. An Inspire Garden, it's the Battle Bond Land. I will say this in all my videos. Wizards, please put the Battle Bond Lands in the Commander Precons. They are designed for multiplayer play, so please put them in the multiplayer products. This deck came together so fast, it was insane. In the span of like 15, 20 minutes, I had 120 cards just thrown together. Like, I'm not even kidding. This deck built itself, it felt like. It was wild. And then the cuts took me like half hour 45 minutes maybe to get it down like this deck took i think around an hour maybe slightly longer it was wild i couldn't believe how fast this deck built itself it is very straightforward and it's just just a bunch of rampage creatures and a bunch of lure effects but i still can't believe how well the deck came together and how synergistic and just good the cards are relatively speaking some important cards i'd like to talk about from the maybes though a mask of memory and swift foot boots some great equipment but Mask of Memory, uh, it's just not doing enough. I have some other cards that only care about dealing damage to players to then draw cards, but they have alternate effects, right? Our own Frostfang gives Death Touch. Toski has Indestructible, so you can put the lure effect on him to divert all of the focus onto him. Yeah, uh, Mask of Memory just not great in this deck setting, unfortunately, but that's okay. Swiftfoot Boots, um, I don't care about haste in this deck that much. Um, maybe I should have, maybe I should have cared more about giving more hasty effects out there, but the, also I don't really give a sh crap about the protection because I have 15 different rampage creatures that aren't my commander or cards in the theme category that way. Retaliation, really interesting. It is an enchantment that gives better rampage. It's only rampage, better rampage one though. So I don't know. I'm not really a fan of the only the rampage one effect. So that's why I made the cut there. And then I was thinking maybe running a card like Atali because if I'm putting a lure effect onto one of my creatures, my opponents will be forced to all block that creature, which could let Atali swing in and actually deal damage or not be blocked. So it's a free Atali attack. I then chose against that because I wanted to focus more on the deck theme. But if you wanted to make a lure deck, that let you get in for attacks on Atali's or other cards like that, maybe some sort of. That'd be a cool other way to take a deck with this kind of theming. And then I cut Chaos Warp because I just had better ac better removal I had access to here. Beast Within is just better than this because you know you're giving them a 3-3. You don't know what you could be giving them with Chaos Warp. The last part of the maybe category, Hunter's Prowess is insanely good. It's just... Again, it's five mana and you're not guaranteed to draw cards. I'd rather just have the soul's majesty like effects. So I'm guaranteed to draw the cards and then declare dominance, pred uh, predatory rampage and uh, look upon a Tarrasque. They're one off effects. They're a little too expensive, but declare dominance uh, just says all creatures able to block this turn do so not the creature you're tar targeting with it. So it's not a true lure effect. Yeah. It's not, it's not great because of that. And if you have multiple creatures out, like I said before, you, you want, you'll want you want to put a lure effect on the creature. You want them all to block and just making all of their creatures block might not be good enough. And I'd rather just have those effects that are more consistent that way. And then Cockatrice just represents a bunch of creatures that said destroy that creature at the end of combat. So something like Engulfing Slagworm destroys, if it gets blocked, that creature gets destroyed. It doesn't get to deal damage. With Cockatrice, if a creature blocks it, it'll get to deal the damage to Cockatrice, and then it'll die at the end of combat. And that's just not nearly as good. You want to be able to stop people from being able to block your stuff just in the track. So that's the deck. What do you think? I'm really happy with it. Like, I am I thought this deck was great. Uh, Rampage is a fun mechanic to mess around with. It went, lead, lends itself really well to lure effects, nemesis mask, stuff like that. And it makes it so that you can get these huge creatures to greater good, momentous fall other effects like that um 
and also I when I first saw Marhalt I got mad because I already had built two rampage decks before and I was worried I was just not gonna be able to build a good one but red lends a ton of help to this kind of strategy that I just didn't know was gonna happen I didn't know invasion plans was a card and now after building this deck I'm so happy that I did because I know cards like invasion plan and stuff like that exist that can really lend to strategies like this force blocks and stuff like that uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Have you ever played a Rampage deck before? Or have you ever played with Invasion Plan, uh, Grand Melee cards like that? I'd love to hear from you. These are all my socials. I post when these videos go live on Twitter. Uh, I will eventually post on TikTok and Reddit. I don't know when, but it'll be eventually. And then Architect and Moxfield are where all these deck lists live. So thanks for watching. And as always, get building splainers. Uh, that is so 